I'm Craig Powell, president of ION Sacramento. Uh, as ION Sacramento is a local government watchdog organization that, uh, that tries to, to bring ethics and transparency to local government, and particularly the city of Sacramento, which has been our focus uh, local jurisdiction since our inception back in 2011. Um, the title of our press release, uh, which, which I think we uh, you all have in your hand, is that Ion Sacramento calls for an, an FBI investigation into Mayor Steinberg's potential corrupt bargain with the State Building and Trades Council, uh, which is also commonly known as the Construction Trade Union, to trade $150,000 in Trade Council campaign contributions. Uh, to Mayor Steinberg's Yes on Measure U campaign in exchange for a recent city council approval of a permanent union monopoly over future city projects. We do not take this step lightly. It brings us no pleasure to, to take this step. Uh, but what we've discovered over the course of, of, of the recent weeks is a very troubling set of facts that, that, and, and pattern of behavior uh, that is involving the mayor's largest single funder of his Yes on Measure U campaign, um, the, the State Building, uh, State Building and Construction Trades Council, and the mayor's recent actions in pressing the Sacramento City Council to approve an anti-competitive project labor agreement, which has given the Trades Council and its local affiliates an effective monopoly over future major city construction contracts a monopoly that will significantly drive up taxpayer costs on city projects and which will unfairly discriminate against non-union contractors and workers in Sacramento. In particular, the project labor agreement effectively discriminates against Sacramento's minority-owned and women-owned contractors, virtually all of which are non-union. The agreement also discriminates against the 90% of local construction workers who are not members of the construction trade union, a very significant proportion of which are people of color. As far as the impact of the project labor agreement on city taxpayers, ION Sacramento issued what we call a blueprint for a post-measure use Sacramento at a press conference at this very spot two days ago. In that report, we projected that the project labor agreement adopted by the Sacramento City Council at the urging of Mary, Mayor Steinberg will likely add $25 million to the costs, the direct costs of the $355 million uh, construction, uh, convention center, uh, Sacramento Convention Center projects, a cluster of three projects with a total price tag of $355 million. We estimate that this project labor agreement will drive up direct cost by $25 million. And because the money is 100% borrowed with long-term debt and bonds, it'll drive up the cost by a further $25 million with a bond interest for a total hit to Sacramento taxpayers of $50 million. And the damage just doesn't stop there. This is, this is a five-year agreement. So for five years, this labor monopoly will be in place. For five years, it will exclude competitive bids, effectively exclude competitive bids from all non-union contractors. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you exclude an entire class of bidders, you're going to get higher bidders. You're going to pay more. And in this case, it's the taxpayer that will be paying more. And that is what we're extremely worried about, particularly in the face of the mayor's efforts to raise the sales tax through Measure U. With 18 other projects in the pipeline for the next year, the city pipeline, we estimate that the recurring annual cost to city taxpayers of the project labor agreement will amount to $10 million or more each year. It's egregious and frankly unconscionable that Mayor Steinberg is trying to convince city taxpayers and voters to raise city taxes by $100 million per year while he's effectively shoveling great gobs of taxpayer money out the back door of City Hall to line the pockets of his single biggest campaign contributor. While discriminating against Sacramento's minority and women-owned contractors and the vast majority of local construction workers who do not belong to a union. In an expo expose published just this morning in the Sacramento Business Journal, 
The mayor admits that he and the State Building and Construction's Trades Council have been working on the citywide project labor agreement for years. Now, why is that relevant? We note in a chronology that is in your press uh, release that the first trades union contribution to Steinberg's committee, which we refer to as a potential down payment, was a $100,000 payment on June 12, 2017, 15 months ago. Their, quote, final payment, if you will, to Steinberg's committee was $50,000, funded just 22 days after Steinberg secured city council approval of the project labor agreement. To the best of our knowledge, this represents the largest political contribution in city history to a city office holder or to a political account that is under the control of a city office holder. We're distributing to the media today uh, some documents. First is a recap, um, um, or, or rather is a letter that is from the Associated Builders of California. That is what's referred to as a Merit Shop Trade Association. And what it does is an analysis of the anti-competitive elements of the project labor agreement. And why is that important? Because when this was sold to the, to, uh, the city council, um, it was done with uh, under essentially the window dressing that this was somehow going to increase local hiring on city projects. Now under the law, the city cannot mandate local hiring. They can set goals, but they cannot require it. Uh, but there is no reason to link a project labor agreement to aspiring goals for local hiring. You can have the exact same goals in, in contracts with non-union uh, contractors, and the city should have that. But that goal of increasing local hiring was the window dressing which disguised from the media and the public the true impact and intent of, of the ordinance and the agreement that was, that was approved. Because the true impact and intent was to create a union monopoly over all future city contracts of $1 million or more, which lines the pocket of, of the city's, of, of the mayor's largest single contributor, the State Building and Trades uh, uh, Council. As a matter of fact, the key signatory to that agreement is the local unit of the State Building and Trades Council, the Sacramento Sierra Building and Trades Council. So. Here we have a contribution of $100,000, which in and of itself is, in our view, in our, we believe to be the largest contribution in city history, being given 15 months ago, followed by a one-year period where the mayor works side by side with this very same union to develop this highly discriminatory, highly anti-competitive agreement, culminating in the actual council approval of this just a month or so ago followed 22 days later by another check for $50,000. Now let that sink in for just a moment. Now we call this a potential case of political corruption, a potential case of quid pro quo corruption, because we don't know for sure what was the bargain. Was it just coincidence that first $100,000 check, then the agreement came, and then a final $50,000 check? Or was there a plan? These are critical questions that need to be answered. We cannot answer these questions. And that is why we are calling today for the public integrity section of the, of the Federal Bureau of Investigations to initiate a criminal investigation to get to the bottom of this and to be able to tell the, the, the people of Sacramento whether or not a corrupt bargain has been struck, trading essentially campaign cash for this, this sweetheart deal that causes harm to everybody else in Sacramento. We have also in your material a summary of all the contribution, contributions that have been made to the mayor's campaign to date. Um, we have it at $890,000, of which $335,000 of which has been contributed by construction trade unions, including the State Building and Trades Council, or by, or by union-affiliated contractors. That's 38% of the total. We also have in your materials today a copy of a California Public Records Act request that IN Sacramento is filing with the city today to ask for copies of all communications between the mayor, his staff, and anyone associated with the State Building and Trades Council, including its local affiliate, 
all copies of all communication in the last few years, as well as copies of all drafts of this project, oops, this project labor agreement that went back and forth over the last few years, or within the last year. We have a, a number of uh, speakers here today, uh, three if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that I'd like to call up and share with you their views uh, about the impact of this project, the labor, labor agreement, uh, from a personal perspective. And first I want to recognize a couple of neighborhood leaders that are here. Uh, Lola Acosta, Lola, would you raise your hand? Thank you for coming out. And, and Jane uh, Michael from, from the North Sacramento community. Um, uh, there's Jamar Jefferson, who's a candidate for office. We appreciate you coming out. Um, and uh, it, it is, uh, this is not a happy day. Yeah, it is not. But we do believe that this can be a new beginning. Uh, we have noticed in the last seven or eight years in particular, a marked decline in trust in city government. And there's a variety of reasons for that. And I don't want to go and catalog them for you today, but I think it's pretty palpable uh, in the city that that, that that is the case. We need to not have this mayor import into City Hall the culture of corruption that he presided over in the state capitol, a culture that sent several members of his legislative caucus to prison during his tenure. I am a lifelong Sacramento. Ion Sacramento is composed of board members who are equally committed to cleaning, keeping Sacramento government clean. And we have a very long and proud history in Sacramento of having a city government with a strong reputation for honesty uh, and, and a lack of, of the kind of corruption we've seen elsewhere. And we are deeply disturbed by this pattern. And this, we hope, will have a turning, will be a turning point for us. Uh, a turning point for Sacramento, where we can finally root out this sort of dirty dealing, which may or may not have happened, but we certainly have the, all the markers of, uh, and we can start fresh with a new commitment to clean, honest, open, transparent, and ethical government. So with that, I'd first like to call up uh, um, Mr. Anchor Singh, who is the owner of Anchor Singh Team. Anchor, would you come on over? I'm a 15-year local construction professional uh, from this community, Sacramento. I currently uh, employ uh, apprentices from the ABC NorCal painting uh, apprenticeship program. We do painting public works projects around Sacramento for SMUD uh, and city projects. Even when I was an apprentice, I had the opportunity to work on some really big uh, city-owned parking garages and projects that really inspired me to go and the business for myself. I am a marriage shop worker and I, and I support increasing opportunities for all workers regardless of their affiliation. I'm here today because I cannot work in a community, uh, in my community because of the recent city council vote for the project labor agreement, community workforce training agreement. For years the Sacramento City Council operated with a construction bidding policy that ensured a fair playing field for both union and non-union contractors. Uh, unfortunately, that ended in August when the Sacramento City Council voted to prevent a majority of local workers from building in their community. Now myself, my friends, neighbors, and young inspiring construction professionals can't get a fair shot and bidding on these projects right in our home city to help provide for our families. Instead, out-of-town workers will be working here and taking their tax dollars back to their own communities. Community workforce training agreements, or PLAs, create barriers for local minority and women-owned construction employers and their employees from participating in building in their community. I am a minority-owned business enterprise and also a small business enterprise. These provisions do not allow for the full utilization of their own workforce. In addition, my workers' pensions are lost entire, entirely to the union when they work on PLA jobs. Painters would lose an average of $6,965 on a 500-hour job that would be a PLA. This is wage theft 
Workers will never see their hard-earned dollars unless they join the union and work for five years straight. These are taxpayer dollars. PLAs also exclude the men, women, and veterans who have chosen to enter state-approved unilateral apprenticeship training programs in pursuit of a construction career. From the opportunity to work and gain the invaluable on-the-job training experience that provides stability for them and their families and their communities. If it wasn't for ABC NorCal Apprenticeship Program, I would not be here today. The same mayor and council who were behind this vote that hurt our community now wants voters to pass a ballot measure that will do nothing more than reward more out-of-town workers, further displacing the veteran workers of this community. Don't let this continue and let local workers continue to build in their community and I ask you to vote no on Measure U. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, before I introduce uh, our next speaker, I want to hand out um, this letter that was sent to the City Council by the Associated Builders of California, the Merit Shop Trade Association. It really outlines these, these pernicious elements of the project labor agreement that effectively bars competition because it's kind of a slick agreement really. It doesn't say non-union contractors shall not be able to do. It's, it's far more pernicious than that. What it does is it has elements in it and requirements that make it from a cost perspective and an operational perspective utterly impossible for a non-union shop to be able to bid and, and perform work on this. So first let me pass these out to members of the media if I may. And Mr. Singh alluded uh, to some of them. One of them is that as part of uh, this, this project labor agreement, all contractors have to pay into a union benefits program, a union retirement plan, a union health plan, for which these, these folks are not beneficiaries. These non-union workers behind us who helped build Sacramento would have to put more than hard-earned money into these accounts and never get the benefit from it. And that's why this is wage theft. And that makes it horribly uh, costly for a, a non-union contractor to be able to bid because essentially they have to re-up the compensation of the workers to make up for the wage theft that's going on. There's also, he alluded to, apprenticeship programs. These project labor agreements require apprenticeship programs, workers to, to go through apprenticeship programs, but only union apprenticeship programs not the, the, the very high caliber apprenticeship programs they're going through uh, through their employers or, or their trade associations. It's another way to put a damper on any non-union contractor from bidding. Dues. They have to pay dues, union dues, even though they're not members, which can cost upwards of $1,100 on a project. Finally, I think one of the most difficult ones to swallow uh, of all of them uh, has to do with who they're able to hire on their projects. You would think a contractor bidding on a, a job would be able to use their own employees, not under a project labor agreement. Under a project labor agreement, contractors have to hire most of their workers, or at least 50% of them, uh, for the smaller contractors, from a union hiring hall. In other words, they're hiring strangers who've never worked with them before on these projects. Well, what business could ever afford to operate by hiring strangers who you have no idea the quality of their work? You've never worked with them before. They don't know your procedures. It is an insurmountable impediment to being able to perform work when you're forced to hire out of a union hall with, with, of people that you have no prior working relationship with. Uh, so next, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, is asked our next speaker, which is Christine Deloney. Leone. Deloney, come on up, Christine. All right, so my name is Christine Leone, and I've worked as a construction professional for 44 years. I started back in the mid-70s. So I've seen this trade develop and change a lot since I've started. Um, I began my career working in a food manufacturing plant. I was hired as a mechanic, and I was trained as an electrician. So that's where my electrical career started. I was a teamster at the time, so I was part of the union. 
I also started um, in 19... I'm, I'm trying to remember why I started my own business. 1989, um, I started my own business. I got my C10 and I, I ran Leone Electric for 27 years. That was my only source of livelihood. So I've been in the workforce and I know what it's like to be a small contractor and I know what it's like to be a minority and a small contractor. And uh, when the downturn came in the economy, I, I decided to start teaching, to give back to my trade. So I worked for a, a school in San, in San Jose and we taught electricians in training and they were a workforce that the, a lot of them were the hard to serve. There were minorities, women, people of color, people that have come out of jails and institutions. And they were all given an opportunity to go to work for non-union contractors to earn a living and a good wage. Some of these people were also farm workers and had been bent over in the fields all their life from children up, right? Or children of farm workers who had opportunities to go out into the trades. So um, I, I have that experience with with that population of people. Now today I work for ABC. Um, I'm an instructor there, I'm an electrical instructor. I still own and run my business. It's smaller now because I'm really focusing on teaching. But I have this to say. Project Labor Agreement, Community Workforce Training Agreement that was recently passed by the city prevents the vast majority of local women-owned small business contractors like mine from competing from and obtaining construction projects in the city of Sacramento. I'm going to add also minorities into that, women and minorities. By creating a one-size-fits-all policy for allowing union-only project labor agreements, nearly 94% of the other construction contractors and related businesses are shut out from building this community. I taught in Sacramento. I did workforce development. I taught through the Salvation Army part of the workforce that was supposed to go out and be in construction. And this PLA will hold them back from that. They will not get work unless they work for the union. So you might want to say, or I can say, or I feel like a California success story. In 1974, I was a woman in the electrical trade. There weren't, I looked around and I didn't see any of me, right? And so, I put a lot of heart and soul and hard work and development and into paving the way for women and minorities. And to get this far and not be able to bid on the larger jobs, it will keep us down, it will keep us small, it will keep us little. And it will keep the workforce that deserves to make the good money that the unions do out of that picture. This is not the time to shut the door on women and minority-owned businesses and scores of Sacramentans looking for opportunities. There are so many people that would love to get into the trades. And, and this PLA agreement will actually only allow you to go to work if you're going through the union. Or if you actually win a contract and you're non-union and then you hire out of their hall. So that means I would have to go to the union to hire their people and not use my own workforce, except for two, two people for my company to work. Sacramento has always been a progressive, open-minded city for its people. Sadly, it has now taken our promise and dreams in the opposite direction. Please don't reward the city for this behavior. Vote no on Measure U. Thank you very much, Christine. Uh, I want to quickly walk folks through the chronology that's at the bottom of your press release. So you, uh, you really uh, aren't mistaken or, or have any misunderstanding of what really has transpired. Uh, it started with the mayor's creation of what's called a recipient committee uh, back on May 1st of last year. Now what is a recipient committee? That's what uh, the Fair Political Practices uh, Commission and the Fair Political Practices Act calls it. Uh, what it really is, is is a fund where the controller of the fund, which is Daryl Steinberg, can spend the money any way he wants. So what do you call a political fund where the controller of it can spend it any way he wants, particularly when he's an office holder? I think it's fair to characterize that as a political slush fund. It really is. So this was created on May 1st of 2017. 
The next act, in step two, is 42 days later, 42 days later, this political slush fund receives its first contribution. And as far as we can tell, it was the first one for quite some time. And it was the $100,000 contribution uh, from the state building and construction trades uh, uh, council. $100,000, again, what we believe to be the largest political contribution to an office holder and a county controls in city history. On August 31st, the Sacramento Bee takes notice of this, writes an article, publishes an article written by Ryan uh, Willis. State that, stated that this campaign committee was created in April of 2017 and said it got a $100,000 donation, no, donation from the State Building and Construction Trades Council. This is apparently the first public mention of the formation of the Steinberg Committee and the State Building and Trades Council's funding of the committee. Next is in July 31st of this year, the Sacramento City Council on a 7 to 1 vote calls to the, our November ballot Measure U, posing to Sacramento voters the question whether they want to double their Measure U sales tax, something the mayor is very strongly in favor of. Three days later, the Steinberg Committee files an amendment to its statement of organization with the Secretary of State, changing the purpose of the committee from an unspecified recipient committee, what we dubbed a slush fund, to a committee formed specifically to support the extension and ultimate doubling of Measure U. Let's fast forward about three weeks from that point. On August 21st, the Sacramento City Council, on a 7 to 1 vote, with no prior public review by any council committee or any prior reading, both of which are acts required by council procedure, they have to run proposed legislation, including agreements and ordinances, which this was through the Council's Law and Legislation Committee. That's sound legislative procedure. So that they have a chance to, to consider and deliberate and get public input on the contents of our laws. Well, the Council on a supermajority vote, at the urging of this mayor, waived that requirement. Also waived the requirement that there be a first reading of this ordinance at a previous Council meeting. They waived that requirement. They were in an absolute pell-mell rush to get this thing through as soon as possible. And we'll leave it to you to figure out why they needed to do it so quickly. Because in the ensuing days after the passage of this was a veritable flood of campaign contributions flooding into the mayor's now Yes on Measure U campaign committee, huge sums of which were from construction trade unions. So they voted on a split vote, 7 to 2, with council members Alan Warren and council members Jeff Harris, both of whom have backgrounds in construction and development, voting against. The two council members most familiar with the industry and the impact of these project labor agreements voted against. What does that tell you? It's Steinberg's urging they approve a five-year project labor agreement. It's dubbed a Community Workforce and Training Agreement, which obscures the real purpose of it. The signatories of the agreement are the City of Sacramento and the Sacramento Building and Trades Council, among others. Now that is the local unit of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. Now, the staff report that was associated with this agenda item, and I don't know of those of you who are unfamiliar with City Council meetings, but in connection with every item listed on their agenda, city staff prepares a report. It's an analysis of it. It educates and informs both council members and the public on what it's all about, and what are the issues associated with it, what problems they might be trying to address. This one was the most disappointing city staff report I've ever read, and I've read thousands of them, because this one completely obscured both the intent and the impact of this project labor. It sold it as just setting goals for increased local hiring. Made no mention whatsoever of the anti-competitive elements of this project labor agreement, which is stifling competition and keeping these men and women from being able to work in this community. And for a government that they pay taxes to. Staff completely ignored that. And because of that, it, it essentially put local media asleep. They had no idea what this really was 
because the staff report didn't, didn't uh, reveal it. I had a, a conversation uh, a week or so after with a local reporter. And he's one of the most respected senior reporters in Sacramento. And it wasn't until I told him what this thing really involved that he was horrified that he missed, missed it because he is a consummate professional. So it, it, even, it fooled even the best of local media. And that was by design, folks. They did not want to broadcast the anti-competitive elements of this, of this, because they knew it would draw the opprobrium and editorial disapproval of, of local media and other critics. So it was ran through as fast as possible. They waived all safeguards and council procedures for prior review. They issued a city staff report they hid rather than revealed the impact of it, putting local media asleep. And then the real coup de grace, as far as I'm concerned, is when at this council meeting, which was held on August 21st, Councilman Jeff Harris asked both the mayor and city staff, have you evaluated what the expected costs of this project labor agreement are going to be on city projects, city budgets, and city tax bills? Have you looked at the numbers? And both the mayor and city staff, to their shame, said, nope, nope, just haven't considered that. How do you do that? I don't know how you do that. Uh, but that revealed a ton. Now, what is the next step? The next step uh, is on September 14th, 22 short days after approval of the project labor agreement. The Steinberg Committee files what's called a contribution report, disclosing the State Building and Trades Council, Construction Trades Council, has made a further $50,000 contribution to the Steinberg Committee. So that's the long and the short of it, folks, and that's what's troubling us, and I think it should trouble Sacramento voters, and that's what's motivating us to get to the bottom of it. And uh, it is very difficult for a local law enforcement uh, agency uh, to initiate uh, an investigation into a very powerful local political figure. And Mayor Steinberg may very well be the most, single most powerful political figure in Sacramento. So it's, it's really kind of asking a lot for our local district attorney or even the state attorney general uh, to initiate such an investigation. And that's why we're referring this to the pros, uh, the ones who, who's, who, who have, have, have a long track record of ferreting out public corruption around the country. And that is the public integrity section of the FBI. So we're going to be submitting a formal request for, a, for an investigation by that unit, uh, either by the end of the day or by tomorrow morning. And um, uh, also, I want you to know, uh, this media release will be electronically issued in a few hours, and it will include links to the handouts that we have today. Um, and included in the handouts, do we have the packet uh, over here? Here we go. Uh, in there are copies of all the FPPC filings that I've been alluding to. It also includes a copy of the summation page, the summary page of all contributions made to date uh, to the uh, Yes on Measure U Committee. Now, we we computed them through, I think, this weekend at $890,000. Uh, but um, Scott uh, Rod, is it Rod? Rod. Scott Rod, who is the, uh, is the author of this incredibly detailed uh, article that was published on SacramentoBusinessJournal.com this morning that did a deep dive into all these details, into these payments, into this whole process of the project labor agreement. Uh, I, I urge people uh, to, to read that uh, and go over it, uh, but what we will be doing is uh, we're handing out now uh, the FPPC filing, copies of that, the summation. Uh, Scott's article mentioned, and it's, it has fresher news than we had, but I think the latest number on total contributions is now over nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's uh, it's uh, it's climbing every day. Questions in a minute. Thank you. Public speech is not something I do for a living, but it's something I uh, tell my kids to get out their comfort zone and go give it a shot. So I hope I can do the workforce uh, a little justice and a little uh, and uh, a little oh and go ahead and give this a shot. You know, for the workforce. Um, my name is Mitch Everhart. I've been an electrician for 20 years and certified in the state of California as a general electrician. I've worked for Berg Electric as a general foreman. Berg Electric is a Sacramento-based electrical contractor 
has worked in the city of Sacramento for over 15 years. I'm a merit shop worker and support opportunities for workers regardless of their affiliation. I'm here today because I cannot work in my community because of recent city council vote for project labor agreement, community workforce training agreement. For years, the Sacramento City Council operated within a construction bidding policy that ensured a fair playing field, regardless of labor affiliation. We have uh, delivered the quality of workmanship throughout our community to be proud of. Unfortunately, this ended in August. The Sacramento City Council voted to prevent a majority of local workers from building here. My friends, co-workers, inspiring apprentices, and myself included. Construction workers are a very proud group of people. We work, spend our money in the city. We show our families, our kids, the work that we have completed. See, son, dad helped build that building. PLAs create barriers for local, minority, and women-owned construction employers and their employees. In addition, workers' pensions, including mine, I've had this experience, are lost to the union. For example, if I worked in a PLA project, I would lose a dollar or eleven fifty an hour to the union, over five thousand dollars based on a five hundred hour job. That's what I call wage theft, and I agree. Workers will never see their hard-earned dollars unless they join a union for five years. PLAs exclude the men, women, and veterans who have entered a state-approved unilateral apprenticeship training program. This is valuable on-the-job training that needs to be done in the city of Sacramento. The same mayor and council who were behind the vote hurt our community now want voters to pass a ballot measure that will do nothing more than further displace the veteran workers in this community. My six-year-old, wise kid, okay, I won't tell you here, came to me one day and asked me a question. Do you know what you do when you make a mistake? I asked him, curious, what son? He said, you fix it. Something as simple as this, like letting all workers continue to build in this city is important. Vote no on Measure U. Thank you. All right, uh, so um, I want to open it up for questions from the working media. Any questions? What, uh, what, what concrete proof do we have here that there was a connection? Anything at all that's concrete? What we have is a, is a series of events and a chronology that is deeply suggestive, deeply suggestive of something really inappropriate going on. Uh, the fact that there was a $100,000 payment uh, at the beginning of the negotiation period uh, between the city and this very same union $100,000 payment to the Steinberg controlled uh, political uh, fund. Then a year's worth of a negotiation of this, right, across the table from the people who just handed them a check for $100,000. Then a rush through the council uh, of, this, of this vote. So there's no opportunity for a critical review. It bypassed law and legislation. It bypassed the first reading. It had a completely obscuring staff report and then follow 22 years, days later with another $50,000 thing. All of it going to fund Measure U. Okay. That is highly suspicious. Do we know whether or not there's actually a quid pro quo exchange, an agreement that this cash would be in exchange for delivery of this project labor agreement? We do not. We don't know if it exists. We don't know if it does not exist. This is highly suggestive. That's why we're calling for an FBI investigation of this. Let them get to the bottom of it. If it's able to clear the mayor of this cloud, wonderful. 
If it's not, then we need to deal with it. It touches upon this a little bit, but, but why the FBI? Why not the State Attorney General? Well, there are political considerations. The mayor is a major political figure in, in, in his party in California, as is the Attorney General. Uh, so in such circumstances, uh, our feeling was that we were more likely to get a completely unbiased assessment of this by someone who is not involved in, in, in the political orbit that the mayor operates in. And that's why the FBI appears to, to be the logical place to, to go. Really quick, you guys said this a couple times, 90% uh, of local construction trade workers are not in unions. Yeah. What do you mean by local? Is that in the city? Is that in the county? It means What's in the region. Stuff? It really means in the region. Yeah. Uh, I, understand. I mean, I, I, uh, uh, and, and that, that makes sense. You know, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot of people in the construction trade business doing a lot of building. And only a tiny percentage of the union was. And, and I, I just say most of them, not most of them, a large chunk of them are going to work on public projects uh, under the protection of project labor agreements, where they have an unfair advantage over private workers uh, who, who are not members of that union. Uh, and why is that? Well, if there's a project labor agreement in place, then they are able to barricade off any competition from non union contractors and non union workers using essentially their political pull to win an advantage they can't win in the marketplace at the cost of taxpayers because it drives up the cost of, you know, to, to the taxpayers and city budgets. Other questions? What yeah. specific law are you alleging the mayor broke or may have broke? Well, we're not alleging he broke any law. We're highly, we're highly we're suspicious that there may have been quid pro quo corruption. There's a specific law, though. It's called the bribery statute. To the bribery yeah, that's what it is. You can't sugarcoat that. Have you but I want to make it clear: we are not accusing him of this. We're saying that this is very suspicious, and that it needs to be investigated, and it needs to be resolved. And the best people in the world to do it is the public integrity section of the FBI. Have you consulted an attorney for a legal authority on this? Well, I am an attorney, so I have some familiarity with it. I'm not a criminal defense attorney or, or a prosecutor, so. I have a basic understanding of the bribery statute. Have you consulted an expert on this? No. no. Any um, other questions? In addition to your role with I in Sacramento, what's your relationship with the No One Measure campaign? I, 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 I am the chairman of that campaign. Uh, and many uh, EOS activists are involved in that campaign in their individual capacities. It is not an EOS campaign. It is an individual campaign. So I am not speaking here today on behalf of the, of the uh, Measure U, uh, I guess the Measure U campaign. We're trying to get to the bottom of something we're very worried about in terms of ethics. How, how long have you held that position as chairman of the We uh, Since its formation in 2011, we've been, or yeah, 2011, we've been around about seven and eight years. Okay. Uh, we, uh, so from the original Measure U in 2011, you've held that position moving forward. The position of president of Ion Sacramento, you mean? Of chairman of the No One Measure U campaign. Well, well, the Measure U campaign only got its launch on July 31st when the council put it on the ballot. Before there, there was no campaign for or against Measure U. That's right, that's what I'm asking. How long did you hold that position as chairman of oh, the No One Measure U? Oh, well, we probably formulated that committee within a week or so after the council referred it to the ballot. I have to go back and look at the actual statement of organization we filed. But within a week or two, we formed it. Okay, so it sounds like it would have been a little longer. It would have, it would have been, uh, uh, it was formed in July 31st, it was referred to the ballot on July 31st. Correct. So we would have formed it by the end of the second week in August. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if Deborah is here today. She's, or Jim Cathcart, the treasurer, you might have that date nailed down a little closer. Okay. Any other questions? No. Yes, you're not in your capacity as the chairman of the uh, Correct. Of Correct. I'm here in my capacity as president of Lion Sorry. Any other questions at all? Hearing none, I want to thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. And again, uh, if uh, you want to make sure you get emailed electronic links to these documents, please leave your business cards and we'll get those to you later this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out. Appreciate it.